let's jump into uh, some of the questions we found around your your book. And I think what's probably worth doing is to elaborate a little bit on the centerpiece that is in the story, which is about deliberate practice. It's a big part of the book. Can you elaborate a little bit, please, what deliberate practice is and how it is sort of different and similar to how we understand practice and learning in general? Yeah, that, as you say, that is the central concept to this whole thing. And it's important to, to set the scene for this because what I'm going to talk about is uh, the result of research that's been done over the past 40 or 50 years into the question of why some people are so extremely good uh, at whatever it is they do, whereas most people are just not so good at those same things. And how do, you know, how do we explain this? And until this research of the past 40 uh, or 45 years is concerned, there was a general assumption that those few people who are so incredibly good were born that way. Basically, that they were born with a rare one in a million natural gift. Uh, that certainly, if you ask people, you know, why is so and so incredibly great at whatever it is they do, whether it's sports or uh, music or ed- anything else, they'll mostly tell you that. Uh, and even in the academic literature, in the scholarly literature on this, that was the sort of default explanation for why some people were so good, that they were just born that way, hard to explain what it was, but they came into this world with a gift for doing that one particular thing extremely well. The trouble with that explanation was that it conflicted with our own observation of real life, which is, yeah, even though we all kind of thought it was a natural gift, We also have all noticed that the people who are extremely good seem to work extremely hard at getting really good. Uh, How could both of those things be true? And so the researchers started looking into that uh, question. And what they eventually said was, you know, a big problem here is that practice is not very clearly or specifically defined. We all think we know what it means, but maybe we don't all know what it means, or maybe we don't all agree on what it means. So that's that's the setup for the question you just asked. Most of us think of practice as something we do when we practice the piano or hitting golf balls or something like that which is sitting down and doing something, doing exercises of one kind or another uh, over and over. Uh, It's what I do when I practice hitting golf balls, you know, or what I did before I looked into all the research. Uh, You know, we think that, well, you go to the range and you um, get a bucket of balls and uh, you just start hitting them. And maybe you have some routine for it. You start with the long irons and you, or with the short irons, and then you move uh, up the long irons and finally hit the uh, uh, the driver and so forth. But if you're like <laughs> if you're like me or like most people, when you finish that session, you're not really any better than you were when you started. You may feel virtuous, you know, like you did some practicing, but you didn't accomplish much. And so the researchers did a lot of work and. Finally, a a team of them, a specific team of the researchers, which we can get to, identified what they called deliberate practice. Now, people hear that term and they think it just means practice, but it does not. And that's what this is all about. What the great performers really do is this activity that the researchers called deliberate practice, and it is different from what most people think practice is. Uh, New elements, they're not complicated, but they're really important. One, it's designed specifically to improve your performance at this moment in your development. That means 
your practice isn't the same as my practice or anybody else's practice. And furthermore, it isn't the same as your practice was two weeks ago. And it's not the same as your practice will be two weeks from now because your ability will change over that period. So that's that's the first main thing. It's designed specifically for you to improve your performance right now. Second thing is, uh, it is designed, and this is the real heart of it, it is designed to push you just beyond your current ability. It doesn't push you to do things you have no idea how to do, because then you're just lost, you have no idea, and it doesn't get you any place. But at the same time, it doesn't let you operate fully within your current abilities, because if you just do that, you never grow. It is constantly pushing you to do things that are just beyond what you can currently do. That's why it always has to be adjusted, because once you learn to do those things, then you have to be pushed again to do the next set of things you can't quite do. So that's that's the real heart of it. Now there's more. Uh, typically, it can be repeated a lot. The researchers noticed that the practice activities that were really effective could be repeated at high frequency. You can do them a lot. They didn't know back when they were doing this research that that actually would connect to later findings about the brain. But it turns out that if you do certain things with high repetition over and over, it, it actually makes physical changes in your brain, having to do with a substance called, called myelin, uh, which uh, in fact turns out to be something that characterizes all the great performers in every field. But it can be repeated a lot. That turns out to be important. And feedback on the results is continuously available. This just makes sense. You can't get better if you don't know how you're doing. If you're working on something but you don't get any feedback, uh, two things are guaranteed to happen. One, you won't get any better. And two, you'll stop caring because you're not seeing any results. So you have to get feedback uh, continuously. Another finding about it is that it's very demanding mentally. And this applies even to people who are practicing physical things, sports of any kind. You might suppose that the limit on their practice is their physical ability to, you know, hit golf balls or kick football balls, soccer balls, uh, or something, but it isn't. What the great performers consistently say is that what limits their practice ability is the mental fatigue of engaging in the practice. When you're doing this right, it's very demanding mentally. And one other thing uh, <laughs> that has to be said, this is a, a deliberate practice is an activity that isn't work and it isn't play. It's something in between and it isn't necessarily fun. It's hard work. All of the great performers emphasize this. It's hard work. It isn't necessarily fun, but it's very, very rewarding because this is what makes them great. So that's a kind of extended answer to your question, but you asked the central question, so I really wanted to explain it.